Hello, my name is Mimansa and welcome back to the video series of Essentialism. This is video number five and these are my notes from Greg McEwen's Essentialism about no repertoire. Um, there are eight ways you can nicely say no without actually using no. So let's look at it. The awkward pause. When someone comes to you with a request, just pause for a moment. Count to three before delivering your verdict. Instead of being controlled by the threat of an awkward silence, own it. Use it as a tool. And if you could get a bit more bold, just simply wait for the other person to fill the void. The soft no or the no but. You could use this in your emails. Emails are generally a good way to start practicing saying no or no but because it gives you a chance to draft and redraft your no to make it as graceful as possible. Plus many people find that distance of email reduces the fear of awkwardness. Here, um, author Greg McCohen gives an example. He was once asked for coffee and he replied back saying, I'm consumed writing my book right now, but I would love to get a uh, together once the book is finished. Let me know if we can get together towards the end of summer. Let me check my calendar and get back to you. If you are that nice, intelligent, smart person but unable to say no, you are soon going to become everyone's go-to person. And everyone's gonna come to you with lots of requests. So learn to say, let me check my calendar and get back to you. This will give you some time to pause reflect and respond accordingly that you were unavailable. This will help you regain your control over your decisions rather than being rushed into saying yes when you were asked. Use email bounce backs. It's so natural to get an auto response when someone is traveling or is out of office. This is the most socially acceptable no. But this also means that people aren't saying no to respond to your email. They are just saying that they are not available at this point in time to respond. Why should we limit this email bounce backs to just vacation and holidays? Author Greg McCowan had an email bounce back with subject line in the monk mode when he was busy writing this book, Essentialism. His message read as, Dear friends, I'm currently working on a new book which has put enormous burdens on my time. Unfortunately, I'm unable to respond in the manner I would like. For this, I apologize, Greg. Say, yes, what should I deprioritize? This is especially useful in workplace. Saying no to a senior leader is almost unthinkable, even laughable for many people. But if saying yes is going to compromise your ability to make the highest level of contribution, it is also your obligation. In this case, it is not only reasonable to say no, but it's essential as well. One effective way to do that is to remind your superiors what you would be neglecting if you said yes and force them to grapple with the trade-off. You could say, yes, I'm happy to make this the priority. Which of these other projects should I deprioritize to pay attention to this new project? Or you could just simply say, I would want to do a great job. And given my other commitments, I wouldn't be able to do a job I was proud of if I took this on. Say it with humor. For example, author Greg McEwen was asked, by one of his friends to join him in training for marathon. His response was a simple, nope. Author's friend laughed a little and said, ah, you practice what you preach. Just goes to show how useful it is to have a reputation of an essentialist. Use the words, you are welcome to X, I'm willing to Y. For example, you are welcome to borrow my car. I'm willing to make sure that keys will be here for you. By this, you are also saying, I won't be able to drive you. By saying this, you are communicating clearly what you will not do, but you are couching it in terms of what you are willing to do. This is particularly a good way to navigate a request you would like to support somewhat, but cannot throw your full weight behind. I can't do it. 
but X might be interested. Pass it on. It is tempting to think that our help is uniquely invaluable, but often people requesting something don't really care if we are the ones who help them, as long as they get the help. So these are the eight ways you could say no. I hope this will help you um, in some way. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please put it down below in the comment box. Thank you.